essentially what customer and the investor is looking for is returns, also looks at the security of the money that he invests with you. And that's a function of the trust that they have in a particular fund and the company. But that all also depends a lot on the interaction experience that an investor has with the fund in terms of return and in terms of the continuous information that he receives from the... See, when the money... Uh, when the return is happening, then everyone is happy. There's no issue at all. But what happens is in the competitive environment, you have so many kinds of funds. Some are short term, some are long term, some are, uh, you know, the blue chip, some are the mid cap. We quite frankly don't understand at all. We are looking for some of us. I'm saying a different kind of people I'll touch upon that. They don't want to understand the intricacy. They are looking for basically returns in the first place. Now, if that return is not coming, they better be explained why that is not coming. Should they be waiting for a little longer? Or, you know, what is the reason behind it? That must be explained to them. So therefore, the interaction experience, which many times what happens is that you invest in a blue chip fund and the times come when actually your uh, uh, small cap fund is perform overperforming. Another company which goes with a long portfolio comparing the blue chip with the small cap and says that we are overperforming in the last six months. Now the investor is tempted. They're saying that, okay, they switch the fund from that to this one now. So this phenomenon may not be open to you, but I am here to talk about the world of investors who are looking for whom you call HNI. The idea is you brand them as high net worth individual or something of that order, meaning that they are one community which is predictable and you can treat them just like that. That is not going to be true at all. We have studied actually the markets here, in India specifically. Number of cities we have gone, we have talked to the HNIs. And what, what, what we hear is a different story. It's not one HNI. The one HNI, depending on the mix of whom you are targeting, how your product is designed, how you are communicating to them, and how their own ecosystem, their own influences, their own friends, their own characteristic, their education, their return, their riskability, that all determines and puts them in different brackets, basically. So we have tried to group them, essentially, and they will fall roughly about four to five different categories. There are people who want just return, plain return. They will take risk. If, if you're not giving the return, they will simply switch over. There are people where return may be the secondary part. They want the capital security. Return, they can compromise, but they don't want their capital to be risked. Now, the degree of variance between the two, I mean, you guys are fantastic in that. You talk about, you took more risk, the return is, probability is higher, you know. So there are, of course, gamblers, you know, who will go and play in the casinos. So, so broadly speaking, we have analyzed the kind of HNIs that you are dealing with in about four to five different categories. And their behavior is fairly unique. And that is notable. Which means if you treat one like the fifth, most likely the experience is going to be different that they are going to feel. Return is not going to be. They want, for instance, some of them want a say in the matter. They want, they want to review where you are putting your investment. They're retired people sitting at home. They have nothing else. They have been studying the market, investing in the market. They think they know all. Or at least they know sufficiently to give advice and so on. 
So things like that are there. The young, young, uh, you know, the guys who are at 40, they become billionaires now. Their investment patterns are different, and so on. Now. So what we are saying is that the world of H and I is not one. It is segmented in various ways, and each behavior needs to be understood, and the experience has to be designed according to them. Each group's social interaction is different. Their influences are different. There are universities we found that actually they don't decide at all. They have a consultant, and many times they have more than one consultant. They talk to them, take their opinion. What they feel then is the best. They adopt it now. So they are influenced by influences. They are social. They have friends who all assemble actually and trade and decide which one where to go. Right? So the influence by, there is a social structure within that also, which you need to study. Yeah? So, in addition to that, your own data, you have data about your customers, which is structured data. When are they exiting? What is the, uh, you know, at what point in the market that they suddenly decided to switch to some other fund? But you have no information where they went and things like that. But there is a lot of structured data within your company, which may or may not be being seen today, which can be very useful for creating patterns of if customers are leaving, do they belong to that one particular class of, uh, you know, h and that I'm referring to? And that can be analyzed. Should we know what the category of h and I'm dealing with now? So a lot of intelligence, which what we call essentially a segmentation according to the structured data. Then on top of that, what we superimpose is also, we look at the, the uh, unstructured data. Now all these individuals, they are on social media. Yeah? They are on Facebook, they are on Twitter. They're... So the characteristics are known. We know where they are traveling, what they are buying, what they are doing, and so on now. That also influences. We know the risk my taking ability. Are they buying houses? Have they bought a yacht or you know, anything like that? So unstructured data itself can also become part of it now in the experience design. That's extremely important. So the, between the structured and unstructured data, what we do is basically we learn about the individual, what you call machine learning. As they are transacting with you, you keep on learning more and more about them, the patterns. Yeah. The important thing is also, if, for instance, you know, I am your customer, and I suddenly have a 50 lakh rupees comes in now, now what do I do? I am dealing with three, four, let's say, investment bankers. Where do I put the money? Become the question now. And at that particular moment, whomever is more accessible, quite frankly, irrespective of the the confidence and trust and everything. Whoever is more accessible, there will be a tendency. The guy who is coming every day, camping, will have an advantage. But should you not, using all the technology, should you not have a mechanism that rather than uh, going through a, a call center, I simply press a button and somebody should be informed that somebody has to meet. Me. So I'm saying these are just giving the possibilities that the experiential thinking has to go in designing your portfolio now that you are designing for customer, and customer has to be a part of that whole process now. You cannot just think that you are managing it the best possible manner, and therefore it is my responsibility to know that you are the best. You might be the best, you will continue to be the best, but the unfortunately the guy who is giving a far better experience of managing you will actually win the race now. So the product that you are designing is not just a return on the capital. A lot of communication about <coughs> continuous assurance that your money is safe. Suddenly a virus, you know, appears in China and markets go tumble. People like us have no clue what, why, what, what is happening. <coughs> we need information. Sorry, I'm just going to use some water.
So those uh, communications have to be part of the uh, entire thing. So the things like machine learning, things of artificial intelligence is what? Essentially artificial intelligence is nothing but aided systems which will enhance your capability to deal with the customer. So partly data, structured data, then you have unstructured data, which he is not telling, but you have access to, and then direct that, you know, using the direct uh, interaction that you are having with the customer can determine almost everything about them. And you are able to predict, therefore, the behavior in the future. And then also know that any event which triggers something abnormal, that I have to communicate something. You know, so that what you hear about the apps and things like that. First thing is that, you know, uh, one should uh, move away from that, that since everybody needs to have an app, I should also have an app. There's no advantage. You can create an app and nobody will ever see it. I bet. So unless you are involving them in designing the experience, you know, it is of no use of any investment now. Similarly, you may have a lot of data but, you know, going through a lot of data is not going to be a, a, you know, simple task. You need super specialists to go through. Uh, you know, they learn the patterns hidden within the, uh, within the data, otherwise useless data. So the most of the time, actually, the data is just lying around and doing nothing. That's what our business is, basically making sense out of data. Uh, we actually bought a company from Moody's uh, some four years back. We have been ingrained into our entire uh, process. Basically, it's artificial intelligence, it's mathematicians, mathematicians and statisticians. They write a specific algorithm to create a specific experience for a specific customer, which is very important in this case. You're talking about. <coughs> So I'm not going to bore you with, you know, the deep learning and with the cognitive learning and all that, but the, essentially the way things are done, and I know that there is a lot of time constraints, so I'll jump. <coughs> what we do is basically we map the journey maps of every segment that you're dealing with, and we have facilities to do so. So number one, we use design thinking and essentially interaction design as the tools to create interaction experience. What we deliver is interaction experience. Interaction experience can be special experience, that means when you're meeting, how do you deal? And the web experience, when they actually choose to deal with the. So journey maps are extremely important, exactly what they expect and how should the process flow move. I'll just give you one symptom. The call center is nothing but inefficiency in the process any call center. So proliferation of call centers actually is a symptom that the processes are totally haywire. So don't, uh, you know, escape uh, by saying that, but we have set up a call center. That actually says that your processes are outdated now, and you're trying to overcome by patching with some call center, okay? On top of that, if you put a wise controlled kind of telephone system, you are telling customer to go away. Okay, so I'm just saying that should not be done. So basically design labs, we have set up now design labs in Pune, we are setting up in Bombay, we have in Chennai, we are uh, now in uh, South Africa, we are in uh, Dallas, we are setting up now in London and uh, Sydney. Basically there are specific labs where you bring in the customer, talk to one what we call empathy interviews basically. You talk to them one to one without, actually I don't talk, they talk, they just listen. And some monitored facilities, we analyze them. Also, we do emotional analytics when they are talking. What is the passion? What is the degree of, uh, you know, the objection or the, uh, or the frustration that they have when you don't communicate and they expect you to do so? So, so the degree of, uh, you know, the happiness, sadness, and the intensity with which they talk also contributes to data for us now. We are mapping now almost, it's a fairly worldwide, fairly unique research we are doing in the emotion analytics where we, uh, with, with no EGs and all, just look at your face and we'll know that what emotion you are displaying right now, which is very useful because what happens is in a, in a programmed research, people are not honest. They give you expected answers, you know, with 
बोलते हैं ना लिपा पोती करके बात करते हैं सो यू नेवर नो वॉट एक्चुअली दिन इमोशनल अटैक यू कॉन्ट आइड योर फीलिंग सो द कंप्यूटर इज एबल टू डिटेक्ट सो वी एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग ऑल दैट इन द डिजाइन लैब्स या and then personalize the experience the idea is that we know exactly what the objections what should be designed how should the you know if i'm designing an app how should the app look and so on this is the kind of lab it is the pune lab so you can see the uh, you know lots of facilities are available in that uh, it's a very free environment and if you any of you are in pune side will welcome you to come and see and you can experience it yourself some of the uh, your fraternity have actually had chance to visit us and they have seen it themselves they are and is fairly unique in the world let me say that this is not a facility easily available with any it company and so on and these are the offices currently we have any questions related to that i was giving in the time which i'm trying to complete it thank you so much appreciate it. Nihilant evolving ideas